afternoon. Mo Love and <clears throat> the Man K having a bass fit. Let me see. See if I can hit that lick. Me and X, me and X, and and, and Mac was just hitting. Y'all see it on my page, right? Gangster, I like that. <clears throat> So that was gangster, right? Finally figured it out right just now. I just heard it. Says she's a boss bitch. Then E, A, E, 
which is the passing note again to the G. Then it's to uh, uh, B flat. Passing note would be the A. <clears throat> that that's the note. And then back to G. Different gears on the <clears throat> like you know going to the uh, to raise it. from one musician to another. Oh, that's simple. That's easy, right? <clears throat> but to somebody that's trying to learn, it's not. So, yeah. Let me let me turn you around a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So, you're way up here. And what is this down here on this low D? Get my my cousin Linnell 
make some beats up for and step on stage. She, I'm a bad bitch, man. You know, I'm that bad bitch. I'm that bad bitch, smooth up, smooth up from Arizona. I'm a bad bitch, and I woke up like this. I was born in this natch. <laughs> Feeling myself. Young, I used to think that I was cute. Now that I'm older, I'm even better than that. Not even time could break me down. Especially when I put it on the nigga, call it sleep. Especially when I put it on the nigga, he falls to sleep. coming from <laughs> I don't know put some lyrics together and let yourself get on that mic 
and fix that shit so no matter what, your voice gonna come out right. You already know what you wanna say. And we just put it, put this bass line behind it, put a bass line behind it. Since I was a young nigga, I was driving them hoes wild. Mm. Get a mic to some of my, my, my mail, cause shit, man. <laughs> shit. <laughs> people y'all know put you some shit together man that'll get it lit right there <laughs> but don't waste to get it all you can get a nail shit <laughs> and blend shit get on the mic and start stomping the yard on that shit you know what I mean niggas buy that shit up <laughs> start putting something together, man, you know what I'm saying, because, <clears throat> you know, I used to pop lock and shit when I was a little guy, man, yeah, I was one of the little rerun characters before I even knew who the fuck rerun was, you dig, or is, if you will, uh, yeah, because Daryl Higgins, and, uh, Kenny and them, man. Kenny, uh, Big Kenny and, uh, <clears throat> damn, I got their name, last name. But anyway, they're, they're kin to, uh, Becky Holmes, Rebecca Holmes, right? They're Kenny and them. So anyhow, man. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. 
Y'all was the, one of the real, real motherfucking day motherfucking ones. So Kenny Carter and all of them, listen, man. <clears throat> try to go with them one time they was <clears throat> they was young itself <clears throat> and there was this show back out there by the <clears throat> peony park i think the place was called the shalimar bar or something like that and i went with them <clears throat> and they was trying to get paid but i was too young way too young to get in for real but they let us let let them in they was kind of sneaking in right You know, because they were teenagers, they, they were just big enough, right? But then they went ahead and they let me do my little thing, my little dance with them. And they thought it was cute. But then after that, they couldn't take me nowhere to anything they was involved in because I was too little. <clears throat> but I was like a... <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell y'all right now. He's little Anthony. Not burnt, black Anthony, none of that. Anthony, whenever you get through, he's uh, along with a few other little in the hood, I don't care, everywhere. When we talking Omaha, Nebraska, there's always a little cat just like, you know, I start out like that trying to hang with the bigger boys all the time. You always got a little bitty cat. He don't care. He going he going to follow them wherever they go. He going to try to do whatever it is they doing. The bigger boys is doing. Trust me. They getting some goddamn draws. God damn it. <laughs> Let me get my sloppy seconds in. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be sloppy seconds, but she, you, you understand you trying to rap too. You know, you just, find a little chick you trying to rap to or hell you might step to a bigger girl too see it's like the little dude <laughs> she trying to do <laughs> pat you on your head little man like <laughs> grab your hand full of booty anyway you know <laughs> but anyhow man it started back then so i got an eye for entertainment then I turned my brother on, uh, on to it. Well, he was already, he was trying to get into the talent shows at school. I got into the talent shows in school. And then one time he was with this group and every time. You know, they would get something and he would just, you know, whatever they got. They shared it with him. It's like, no, nah, eh, nah, not this time. You're going to get the whole goddamn cake and get to eat it too. So I helped him. And he got that motherfucking trophy. Myself and my two little uh, younger sisters, younger than him, right? All four of us got on the stage and helped him take this, this, this talent show at his school. They try to bullshit him and wait so long to give him the damn trophy. But they gave it to him, you know, because I said, I owe my mind, oh, hell no, nah, he won. But you didn't want to give him the trophy right now. You wanted him to wait and give him the trophy. I guess somebody wanted this. Somebody tried to protest or something. Maybe that's what it was. But he won because the crowd said he won. So there you go. You know, so I got an eye for it. Ben had an eye for it. it man. I won first place one time at Mason, <laughs> Mason, uh, I don't know, what is that, sixth grade, going into the seventh grade, Mason Elementary. Well, this school, if you go on, what is it, 24, yeah, I don't know, it's 24th Street, 
or 23rd, 24th, whatever, man. If you get there to Leavenworth Street, you come on over the damn hill, you head over south. When you get to the bottom of that hill, you see something look like it was. It used to be a school. Then they turned it into a, an apartment building. But it used to really just be a school. You know, family dollar or dollar general, whatever that story is up there on Leavenworth, right there on top of the hill. You come to the bottom of the hill. And and that's, uh, yeah, I think it's 24th, ain't it? Well, Jackson Towers or whatever. And you, you can see right out there when you look south from the Jackson Tower, come straight down the street, come down the hill off Leavenworth. Uh, you know, you'll go uh, across Leavenworth this way and down the bottom of that hill. When you go to the bottom of the hill, that was Mason School way back when. I went to that school and I, I got, I won the talent show and I beat out a crew that was, uh, it was two twin brothers that came from California and they was always promoting uh, uh, dancing over uh, violence and all that stuff, right? And street, uh, gang violence and all that other stuff to go with it, right? And uh, they had some, they had two or three uh, little snow bunnies with them. They were stick as hell. And they got on, they did their little performance or whatnot, man. They did their performance, you know. They came on after me, but my shit must have been the bomb. Cause <laughs> I tore it up, man. They gave me a trophy or whatever, man, you know. Came a week or two later and they gave it to me or whatever, you know. There was this, this one boy, he, had, <clears throat> he looked like Freddie Jackson. And uh, I think I think he was one of, uh, one of, uh, I'm not sure, but he looked like he reminded you of Freddie Jackson. But he was a little lighter skin than him, a little more lighter, and his eyes looked like marbles. You know, real pretty eyes. I guess you could say that, you, you know what I mean? He had them, you know, colorful eyes, right? Uh, Lisa Cannon, might be one of Lisa Cannon's brothers or something like that, because I was in the sixth grade back then. We was in the sixth grade going to the seventh grade. And the school was really an alternative school for bad kids or whatever. And I used to go to all these different schools and shit. There wasn't just... I was no bad kid. You just end up getting trapped into all this bullshit because they wanted to make you feel like you were still one of them, you know, one of the other, you know, your conditions were the same thing. You in the ghetto, blase, blase. So they just did it like that. I'm like, whatever. But I went to all these different schools. Mason Elementary is one of them. And, uh, <laughs> shit, got in a talent show and I won. You know, went through whatever don't kill you, man, make you strong, man. I'm going to tell you that right now, you know. But after then, but then even then I was playing football and all that shit, man. So, because I started down the boys club playing football, you know. <laughs> Our team was Kansas City. <laughs> Kansas City, yeah, yeah. Mr. McIntosh came to that banquet, man, when I played for uh, Swager. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I was trying to get you on the team. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was just listening. I tell you, yeah. Problem was, I was way up on the hill. I've been trying to get on the team. You know, you, you, you sign up to get on the varsity team. But they started me on the little midget teams that don't go nowhere they just be in the backyard playing right from all the college teams and shit i ain't had no problem but i really wanted to get on the varsity team because you know again i mentioned i was a little bit stronger a little stronger than you think you know what i mean i get with the big boys shit take a hit or whatever man get on up 
I, I dust myself off and keep rolling because I'm going to be that rock in your goddamn suit. <laughs> you can't get it. You, put, you might take the rock out and throw it over. You look around that rock right back in your goddamn suit again. You dig? <laughs> you could smash me, nigga. You can't smash me, nigga. Bam's like, bam, you hurt yourself trying to get your nigga out saying just like that rock in your suit. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's been a journey, man. Just like I'm talking about these CDLs, and I'm telling this woman, I'm I'm going through the motions, making this grievance. Because I, like I said, uh, goddamn it, if you ain't gonna do it, motherfucker, please give me my goddamn money. Give me my fucking money, and let me take it somewhere else. Don't tell me all oh, your money just gone, man. Anybody that's in the natural, nigga, man, goddamn it, they ain't talk. You didn't give them, they you fucked over their shit. Go down the line and just start whopping motherfucking head. I don't care who fuck it, who from the goddamn beginning signing up. Hit that bitch in her fucking head, goddamn it. Then go to this motherfucker. Where the problem is, work might work your way back. Everybody gonna get knocked in the head. You hear me? Lucky I don't. You know I. Advance to another way of handling this shit. But you know goddamn well, man, you not listen. I'm going to be I'm gonna be quite frank with you. It's just like that goddamn truck. You got to put on brakes way early. So you can slow that son bitch down and then get to cruising where you in. Whatever. You ain't cause no hazard, no accident. Or you trying to avoid this goddamn hazard. But like I said, motherfucker, I want my goddamn money back. And by any means, you're going to give me my shit back. You understand me? That ain't nothing to sneeze at. You give me my goddamn money back, bitch. You didn't teach me shit. Y'all just straight bullshit or somebody. Well, that's what it is. And I was told people, give me my goddamn money, nigga. I don't want to hear nothing else. I, look, I'm all the way through. I done reached out nice. I wasn't bullshitting with things I said. As far as being a really nice guy, you know, I'm that nigga for real. But you know, push me to the limit to, you know what? Fuck you. When you get done, give me my goddamn money. Period. And then you go on to something else. Don't waste, don't try to schedule me on with some bullshit. Give me my fucking money, bitch. And I mean it. You and the rest of them, you have your ass in the federal penitentiary. And I'm not playing with you. You think I'm bullshitting? If you, don't be scared if you want to. Because it's, it's going down. I'm busting your head. You understand me and everybody else in the, in the shit. Using the proper tools, the proper procedures to bust your motherfucking head. I meant what the fuck I said. Give me my fucking money. And I ain't asking. I'm telling you. Drop it off your ass. Hurry up. Bitch. Everybody else kiss your ass. I, I'm not an ass kisser. Okay? I ain't just gonna go for that shit. Everybody in the shit gonna get served. I'm telling you. Now, you can take that. Any motherfucking way you want to. At this point, I don't give a fuck. Hear me. Put my motherfucking money in the bag. Set it down. Walk the fuck away from it. Go on about your goddamn business, bitch. Because as much time between here and now, you could have flipped it 10 different ways. That means you got to. Give me mine back, bitch. On hood, on the casino, on the goddamn everything, nigga. You understand the fuck I'm talking about. Give me my fucking money for goddamn it really nut on your in your face, nigga. That way. Trying my goddamn patience. Me 
anyway. That was that peak that that uh it's on my post. Mia X <laughs> she done shaved her hair all bald headed. She just fucking I'm tired of it. Let me go ahead and buzz all this shit out. When all she got to do is slap her hat on, put it on right, man, and she, yeah, I always want a little taste of her gumbo. I'm going to have to come get me some inside. And my baby, I'm going to come get me some of that goddamn gumbo. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> her granny, her great granny, her mama and them. The made this goddamn gumbo. This guy, this girl, that remember every seep. Terry, she, I take a word for it. I know it's some good. You know what? There was a woman who lived on in the hood back in ninety something, man. And her and her husband's from Louisiana. Now he might not he might not have been looking like he was that good nigga, but I guess, man, you know, it didn't make no difference. She was, I don't know, attractive enough, but you know what I mean. But she held true to it that wasn't never, ever, any time, anywhere, any place that 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 can uh make her disloyal to her husband, her man. You know. And she got this compliment all these compliments from men all the time, but she stayed loyal to him. And so then I was like, man, you know, you from Louisiana, well damn, you was about this gumbo. What is it? I mean, I was like, what you what you need? I like to taste it. I like to get an idea. I ain't never had no goddamn gumbo. Never. So she's like, you know, I kept asking her about it. Can you make it? She said, yeah, I can make it. I said, well, what do you need? And I kept asking her so I could get all these ingredients and stuff. And then she cooked this shit, but it was like she really didn't want to because I guess, you know, it's, it's just like anything. People got a gift for name. You know, it's special. They got it to a T and they ain't just, you know, you know what I mean? Like, they don't want to tell you no. He's like, yeah, I may, I'll make you some. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, you know. Thinking, you know, it's just passing, hoping you just go out to, to, you know, get to the point where I really don't got time, you know, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, because it take a long time for it. Okay, all right, so I left her alone about that. But, yeah, gumbo. Then I was off in the military, and I'm way over in, uh, I'm in uh, uh, Kaiserslautern, in Germany, right? Kaiser uh, Strauss, right? So, anyhow, I man, in in the unit, in the support group unit, uh, I guess I can bust it out. I, I was in 5th Maintenance Battalion. Ordnance Battalion. 5th Maintenance, okay? Filthy filth. And <laughs> proud of it. Who? Cool. Shit. Anywho, man, uh, she was from Guyana or whatnot. So there was some different dishes and different stuff. And over in Germany, they got every damn ingredients from every motherfucking where. Do you hear me? I don't care if it's Jamaica. I don't care if it's from... I don't give a damn where it's from. She, she was from where Where you say you... She, where she was in the... Uh, she was a, a, a lugger, right? On the parachute part of uh, the unit paratroopers right and she was from uh she said guyana right guyana so i was like what's their kind of what what kind of dish they got you know what is they famous what is their famous like jamaica you know they got jerk chicken you hear that right that's they 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 brand right this whatever and she's like, yeah, all this, all that, you know, this, that, this. I said, well, shit, whatever you need, tell me, but shit. She was more arrogant than motherfucking Grace Jones. Do you hear me? I bought this stereo that I laughed at her about. I bought the stereo from her. 
because I felt a little bad for it. Like, mm -hmm, they really got you. That They said that was the barbecue. I asked about the stereo, and it's, man, you don't want this goddamn stereo. Man. This the barbecue stereo, man. We take this and beat this. We drag it to every time we come out here and barbecue, man. Then they uh back to deploying, back, coming back home. And, uh... She wanted it because she was down there with him when they barbecued and everything, right? So she ended up buying. I said, how much did you spend for it? <laughs> and they hit her for a lick for like, I don't know, $800 or something. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> she said, I said, yeah, that's the barbecue. That's the barbecue uh, thing. They wouldn't even sell it to me, but they sold it to you. What's, what's going on with it? And she's like, yeah, every time you turn it up, it cut off, you know. It, it, I don't know what it was. She didn't know how to really use the motherfucker. But she, the, the truth of the matter is, is that she was hadn't got tired of it already. Like, really? You got tired of it like a few minutes ago? You, oh, I couldn't. Nah, you was, pff, forget about trying to uh, get it out of your midst. You, you, you know. Just go ahead on going about my business, right? But now all of a sudden, it's for sale. It's hot, right? I said, well, I ain't giving you nowhere near. And she said, well, how much you give me? I said, shit, i tell you what. I'll give you $200, man. <laughs> Maybe three because of stay on. I'll give you $100 for each speaker because it was cabinet speakers and it was a sharps. Uh, stereo and the only reason why I bought this I got it from I bought it I gave her 350 bucks for it and the only reason why I bought that stereo it had everything it had the, the it had a, a big ass equalizer and boom you know a, a, a equalizer and then it had a, a amp on it inside it then it had the tape deck where you can dub tapes and shit. Then it also had uh, where you can play records and shit and albums and everything. on it. And it also had a CD player on it. And the reason why I really wanted it in the first place and I bought it from her because my uh, cousin, Linnell Druitt, her mother had one of them. They know what stereo I'm talking about. Their mother had one of them stereos. Back then, it wasn't no uh, CDs to it. So, you know, it was different, but it just reminded me so much because it did have the dual tape thing, I believe. Yeah, dub on it. And the stereo where you could play uh, records and stuff on there. It was just like that. And it's, it, she had a sharps. And also, and it had a cabinet with the little glass and stuff, and the little glass door you close and all that stuff, right? Yeah, man. And that was way back in 1970. You see what I'm talking about? Way back there, baby. That's when they moved from there and went to where they are now. So, it reminded me so much of them, so much of them and her. Because you... It, TV, you can just cut that, man. You could take that TV and go wherever. Honey, their mama's Vera, a.k.a. Honey, did give a damn. She turned that TV off quick, man. Turn on that and listen to music all day, all night. Love music, so. And you can ask anybody, anybody. You know, she watched the local news, what's going on. Some nigga got shot. Oh, they giving away some food. Or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> but other than that, this music. And she had one of them. And I remember. So I got that stereo, man. And then I bought two more speakers with it. Was uh, Those speakers that's in there, was, if I'm not mistaken, they 12 to 15. Uh stereo that I bought taught, bought two Sherwin Vegas and they were 10 inch speakers in a 10 to 12 inch I can't remember exactly 
and them motherfuckers beat. They had automatic uh, shut off switch that when it gets too hot or it's beating too much, it just shut off. Them uh, motherfucking speakers cost me 250 bucks a piece or 275 a piece. And I bought them at the same time. Just bam, give it to me. You know, and put it with that stereo system. And beat down the fucking barracks with that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, packed it up and brought it home. And then I sold it to my sister Brenda for like a hundred dollars. It was a steal. Here, you want something? Here, give me a hundred dollars. I get to you. And all the music and stuff go with it. You know. You have to ask her what she ever did with it. All right. And now, uh, man. So there you go with entertainment and all that. Yeah, I I got an eye. Or you can get with my other cousin, Laverne Crump. <laughs> I could take her and you, Linnell. You and Laverne. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And put y'all on Love and Hip Hop, Atlanta. Or Well, love and hip hop, because I guess wherever the fuck you at, you can do that. Uh, Real Housewives of Arizona, Real Housewives of Oklahoma, or whatever. They move around. Wherever the fuck you at, they come see you. You got a story and put y'all shit together and y'all dragging each other and whoop that. <laughs> or you know how, you know, niggas just can't get enough of y'all. And you got to, whoo, Lord. You know, and then you will Lady friends and all that stuff. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? Ain't no baby tell you cross your hands and say, Fuck it! I'm through with this shit called the world. You understand? <laughs> shit. Get it wise high. Get it wise high. Get it. High. And if they try to keep it to you, park it like it's high. Park it like it's high. <laughs> And if the niggas try to get it to you, pop it like it's hot, pop it like it's hot. I got the really um in the porn shot down in the woman fist because it got a good window. <laughs> See these ice cubes? See these ice cream? It was real bachelor. Million dollar boat. <laughs> Exterior like fish eggs. Get a new nigga, ma. That's how you get a his head. <laughs> To the one, two, three. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. She. She. I help you get there. Just ask you cutting bugs, buggy. I got you. She. Stretch your imagination. It's not. Listen, let me tell you something. If you see it, you can achieve it. Trust me. She. You ain't too old. Yeah, it is. Add to the shit they think is, you know, they done done all the, be like, yeah, y'all be something, you right in that same uh, bracket, so you're, you know what's going on. Help the show keep popping, you did. Be like, who is that thought over there? Who the fuck is you calling a thought? Had these goddamn fingernails this damn long. Wait a minute, who the fuck is you calling a thought? <laughs> Wait, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get to play it all out. There it is. Uh, whatever you got to do, take you some classes or, 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 or something. Just and, and get into a, a, a theater, thespianism, or whatever and shit. And, and, and the characters that be in you that everybody else know you got in you, you can bring it forth. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's in you. You know you know how family, we know who's funny. You know what your phony folk, funny, comedial focus points are, you know, and shit. Like, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? And there you go. Break them off like a piece of chicle, chicle stick. A tic tac, you did. Put some good breath in their mouth. You hear? 
<laughs> well, I'm Ismo Love, and I'm on the Delta chilling on a good Saturday afternoon. It's hot, but I ain't complaining. You dig? Because when it gets cold, it gets cold. When it gets hot, it gets hot. Yeah, I had a fan and air conditioner, but guess what, man? My mom not here. She just went on. She just went to the uh, uh, with the Easter Bunny. You did. Gonna talk about. So uh, you know, I'm right along with it. It's hot and sloppy and everything. You dig? They ain't here to enjoy it. And so therefore, I'm gonna suffer right along suffering. You dig? No, I ain't turning the motherfucker on. Leave it up. Be miserable. You dig? If that's the case, but it's not. It's just staying loyal. I'm believing I am going to go to my vote, man. You dig? Shit, why should I be all enjoying shit? You dig? Even though they are in a whole better place. Because you know God didn't stop thinking. Since when did God stop thinking? Really? Once this flesh is gone, baby, in the inside, God, before, he ain't got no, listen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If God's with you, what can be again? You dig what I'm talking about? God said, no, nah, I'm glad you think you had that much juice. They ain't going to burn up no fire. That was for you, Lucifer. And I'm going to put it like this cause, and stick this on your mind. He saw the best in me when everyone around me could only see the worst in me. It doesn't matter what I did or what I've done. He saw the best in me When everyone else around me Could only see the worst in me He is mine And I am his it doesn't matter what I did. <laughs> right? Because he saw the best in me. When everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. <laughs> so, but it works when you stop acting a fool. Stop acting a fool. Don't take no big, dumb, 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 goof-ass doodle and then turn around and do it again and again and again and again and again. And then at the end time, I'm going to act right. God know your heart. He know where you at. You keep on fucking with Lucifer, that's where you're going to go, right with him. You understand that? I don't mean you get to do dumb shit over and over again. When you realize you know you're wrong, you're wrong. Don't do it no more. Don't do it never, no, no more, ever. Never, ever, ever. Do not do it no more. Just that plain and simple. And you too can be delivered. You understand that? Just like I talk about, top, top about. You know, they pull something and I'm listening to them. They thinking I'm finna do some real dumb ass shit. I'm like, really? That's what y'all think about me? I'm finna go over there and bust all the windows out the motherfucking uh, tractor. I'm finna go cut ties and, 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 and fuck up the lines. I ain't, no, no, uh-uh, hell to the no. That, no, I want my motherfucking money, man. I could have popped in on you any given time and said, nigga, drop it off your ass, motherfucker. Right now, I don't want to hear nothing about no credit. If you ain't got no cash, nigga, I'm telling you, you ain't got my motherfucker, man. You ain't got that whole stack, nigga. This, this shit is over with. 
I didn't do that neither. I don't need to break my arm off. I don't need no goddamn cookie. That's the way it's supposed to be. But I'm telling you, man, break bread. Drop it off, man. Go on about your business with you, please. I don't want to make this no worse because I'm telling you, I'm going to have them boys in your fucking ass, motherfucker. They're going to be on that goddamn truck, your trailer, or every goddamn thing, boy, everything bought you. You're going like, goddamn, man. If I in the correctional center, every time, every time I turn, yeah, bitch, I can have them on your ass. You know, you got your big blue ass, so you know what I mean? Yeah, that way. I don't think you have no problem, you know what I mean? One crab to them others, right? See, I ain't even had it, yeah, because I noticed that too. All y'all was thinking y'all was Snoop Dogg and all that shit, and y'all was doing all that, right? Yeah. Fuck you. I paid my money, man. I ain't come for all of that shit. You know what I mean? It's funny how motherfuckers always do want to act like they so goddamn hood when Gary pulls some bullshit. Come on, really, man. I could have looked and seen that goddamn big blue ass truck and be like, man, fuck this, man. Give my money back. I, I'm already off the flip. No, no, don't even pay. Don't even, I don't even want to be here. And never tell them why. It's like, nah, I, I just want to do something. Okay, where else we want to go? I could have went there, which I probably should have. You know what I mean? At the end of it, should have. Like, I thought you motherfuckers was real adults, man. You know what I mean? Y'all still on some bullshit, man. Give me my motherfucking money, though. <laughs> man, this is Mo Love, man. And the Man Cave, man. I'm really me mellow. I want to say what's up to my cousins and all them. You feel me, my family? You know this is Bug Buggy, man. You know what I'm saying? This is your brain, man. For life. It's your main man, two ton. You did. And to the rest of the world just not knowing me, you understand? It's Mo Love, you dig? Uh, Mr. Mo Love. Mo Love, you're in the man cave with me. On the Delta Belt here. From goddamn California to motherfucking uh, to Atlanta, Georgia, you dig? We on right there below. Missouri. <laughs> And all that. <laughs> we down here. You dig? Everything down here. The dirty south, baby. You dig? The Delta Bill. This is the Chitlin Circuit. That's what goes on from California to Atlanta. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, I wait for somebody to discover you up there. <laughs> and him. And him. Wait a minute. Let me click. My heels to dance. Click, click, click. God damn it. <laughs> Matter of fact, y'all watch y'all some Diana Ross. Some movies about her. It is. Mahogany. Billy Holiday. Yeah. Get into it. Get into some of that. Or some Biloxi, you dig what I'm talking about? But yeah, I'll be back with some more. Base fit, having a base fit. When I feel like I have a fit, I'll bring it on as a beat of some guy. Dog it. Yeah, I'm trying to slow it down like Pinky Dabney say. I'm trying to quit cussing, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> But a lady got to be rough out here sometimes. You don't even understand. <laughs> I hear you, baby. I hear you. Keeping it 100 trucking experience. That's my girl, man, all over the whole world. Baby, make that make that goddamn track the smoke. Make that stack smoke. You heard me. Cause she was about to quit that some bitch boy. She <laughs> keeps out the baddest motherfucker. 
She thought she wasn't going to get back to her kids and that some bitch started doing one of these numbers on that black ice. She handled that shit, though. Yeah. She got back on there, put her hat in the cowboy, put her some Daisy Dukes and pulled up in that thing, boy. And tied that shirt up under there, man. Put a cowboy hat on, man. Got back in the saddle and lit that some bitch on up. She did her inspection on that some bitch and got back on the ride. She, that's Pinky Dab, y'all know. She got a lot of heart, you hear me? Tell you. And on. I'll be back for some bass fit. I'll mow love. I'll be back.